<laughs> well, if you don't say anything else about my guys, they are resourceful. So they have built their own oil changing rack for a D6. They better short off hope it was a good block pour day. Because uh, that's a lot of weight up here on these retaining wall blocks. Not sure where everybody went to. We got the, the state inspector is in the landfill. So Aaron might be up there uh, dealing with them. Every month they come in and inspect the landfill. So I just came over here to see what the guys had going on. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is pretty, pretty ingenious. Makes me a tad bit uncomfortable being under here but uh hell they've been working on it all morning so evidently it's uh it's okay little buddy i tried to get you with the drone a while ago you, you didn't even pay me no mind i'm elusive I, <laughs> elusive <laughs> i did get your brother though brandon was greasing the uh, uh -huh. the screw over there so i did i did get him i thought i heard it but it's just i thought it was too windy so i didn't, uh, I didn't look into it yeah you know me i don't care if it's windy or not we're gonna we're gonna fly it hey i'll have to uh I have to put a tag uh, in the video right now, uh, right up here, of uh, when uh, you went and rescued my drone for me. Oh, That's yeah. been a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I took that thing out. Matter of fact, I was right here and I flew it up. I forget how many thousands of feet I went. Uh, but anyway, the wind was hauling butt up there and took my drone probably a mile and a half, two, maybe two miles down into the yeah, woods. It was, it was close, yeah. And uh, Aaron had to go rescue it with his, his drone, but anyhow i love your oil changing rack dude I, it was a little sketchy you know when i crawled under there a while ago but you just better hope you you got these blocks on a good concrete pour day it hasn't fallen down yet not yet not yet we got some cracks <laughs> i do see some crack in here uh, oh man you know what after our forklift video last week i got a few comments on our safety protocol around here yeah but i think i'm just going to tell them we did everything with a green screen if osha shows up like all that was trick photography none of this everything that you're seeing right now like these cracks that's just due to my uh my editing skills everything yeah hold the camera is, still yeah <laughs> everything is make, make believe but nonetheless what y'all got going on here did y'all do a, a service owner or just had to no, clean the belly pans out no, or what? So, so our services are still included by cat they okay. did that about three weeks ago yeah what we got is an overheating issue in uh, the transmission okay and uh so i'm doing my due diligence as they say if i said that right you did all right uh as long as you said due diligence and not due dil diligence i wouldn't say that okay no. all right uh, due diligence yeah so <laughs> i don't know i I'm i don't know where now. i'm going all right <laughs> all right so you're doing your due diligence and just getting her cleaned out yeah yeah the more we say that sounds but yeah anyhow, um, <laughs> so yeah so we're, we're cleaning it out and i'm checking all my hydraulic lines make sure ain't nothing like jammed up in there and, right and pinched one off stopping my transmission fluid from getting up here to the radiator and so when it over it overheats what's happening it's just giving you a it's throwing a, a code, code. It's, it's uh it's primarily it's the torque converter overheating it's throwing an alarm in the cab you know torque converter hot stop stop machine right and it's been doing it to antonio now for uh for a good while but it's getting getting more and more frequent yeah. uh, so i'd like to find a bad hose or something which i haven't found All right but if it you know if it's a torque converter or something like that you go ahead and get it knocked before it get goes it. out and runs through the transmission or yeah something. Well, that would be that would be bad yeah rolando sent me a picture yeah that was a little a little up, while ago putting that pan down right there yeah if i can i'll put it in the video but man these pans were just caked up as you can imagine this thing rolling through the trash all day long man this stuff just all the dust collects on the oil and it just mm -hmm. they can get really really gum yeah. gummed up all that good stuff all right, there. right there yeah okay well you got her nice and nice and clean do you think any of the you know just the belly pans being full were some of the culprit i really doubt it i doubt I it, really too. Doubt it. the radiators all look pretty good uh, the belly pans had a bunch of stuff in them yeah you know maybe four inches thick in some places but, right uh but no, I don't think it was enough to, to cause our problem. Okay. The only thing we found is there's a uh, the seal on the back of the transmission. Yeah. It's leaking slightly, but all our fluid levels are good. Okay. So there was a bunch of dust. You can still see some stuck to this where the oh, oil yeah. residue had it on there. Right. But uh, there's a dent. Oh yeah. Something, on the something, dust. Something's done. Got up there and hit that dust cover. Had dust it. cover, but there was a little bit of stuff leaking around the seal there. 
that we found. But, um, but the fluid levels are okay? Yeah, all the fluid's good. Everything looks good. Huh. Didn't find anything that I think would stop fluid from traveling. No. So. Well, at least, you know, you did, um, you know, did what you could to get her cleaned up. Now, if the tech does have to come in, he's got somewhat of a, a cleaner area to work and we know that that's yeah. not the culprit it must be something internal yeah and i didn't find anything so i went ahead and called them and they'll be here probably thursday okay good and i'm just gonna leave this thing down here until they get here all right good deal buddy let me grab this one yep get it yes sir yeah i seen your case excavator back there your rental yeah yeah so we're we're trying to catch up and stay caught up so we rented us a case hub okay yeah i never read a case they're pretty smooth man it's yep. uh a lot of people talk some pretty they, serious crap about case like they, they do uh and in, in older cases and stuff i've been on yeah you know i wouldn't get on another one but some of these newer ones um with how smooth they operate and stuff like that i put it right there with the new hyundai's would you oh yeah they're comfortable um uh, plenty strong okay i might have to go back there and, and run it i saw brandon a while ago when i was flying the drone yeah, he's brandon, got the screw on the brandon got in it on and the Cabelco. Uh, he couldn't figure out how to get the throttle turned all the way up yeah and he didn't change the auxiliary for the thumb you know on our cabelco oh yeah yeah he said man that's the slowest piece of crap i ever done <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. about like me when we were up at hyundai in atlanta i was tracking a big hoe mm -hmm. and uh i was trying to turn i was like man this thing ain't got no power i had it in stupid rabbit rabbit mode mm -hmm. but uh, yeah we'll have to go back there and check out brandon here yeah, in a minute so uh, so i guess on this one though we'll just have to wait until until yeah. Thursday, until the tech comes and plugs his computer up and see what he see what he's got to tell us. I hope he finds something. Um, is it? That's odd. It don't take long to get hot. And I it, mean, it, it was so hot, you know, touching the the pans or the bottom of this or anything down here is just. I mean, it burn was so you. hot, man. Uh -huh. Some of this stuff, I, as a matter of fact, was pulling this down. Yeah. Where it was packed in there around the transmission, it was still warm this morning. Ooh. Yeah, that's how you so. get you a belly pan fire right there this thing's got the fire suppression it does. system on uh, it doesn't it let's go around to the yeah. back side all right let's the doors do okay that's kind of neat how it is all right so go straight down to the end of this wall up on here we look at the nozzles and stuff and then check okay. out the tank okay yeah go ahead and get comfortable right. so let me this, let me climb up there this d6 landfill bulldozer yep it's pretty cool okay so you got these these right here right yep so this is all part of the fire suppression. Yeah, this is all part of the fire suppression. So if it catches on fire anywhere, these nozzles are hidden all over the place inside this thing. The other side, up underneath it, all around it. That's cool. And there's a control box in here in the cab. All this here, red. take the camera. Let's we'll take the there. camera. All the red stuff here is the control panel, the brains for the fire suppression. And it's got a manual option, just like a fire extinguisher. You pull the pin, hit the button, everything gets covered or it can pick up on excessive heat and this stays energized all the time. So when you shut the machine down at the end of the day, you cut your master switch off, yeah. this is still energized. So uh, it can it can put smart. itself out 24-7 if, if all if around the does, clock. If it does flare up. That's right. That's pretty handy. There. Everything's covered in dust because we've been blowing it yeah. today. This is cool right here. No, don't, don't step in here yet. Okay. So this is... Uh, Oh. That's our, our access. So see, there's another little floor hatch. Another fire another suppression nozzle. nozzle hidden in there. That's pretty slick, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm about to detail this thing. It was clean till I got it with the air hose blowing all this out of stuff in here. All in the seat. Antonio's gonna kick my butt. Yes, he is. Oh yeah, you gonna be in big. You gonna be in big trouble, buddy. Oh yeah. Yeah, we gotta get her vacuumed out before he gets back in this thing. We ain't done with it yet. I'm gonna make a bigger mess for him. Make it. Better, Are so. you gonna leave the bulldozer down until I am Thursday? I think I am. Uh, I think that's probably smart. Ain't no sense to take. Yeah, it back. we got we got plenty of compactors up there, and yeah. and uh, take advantage of that and get some good compaction done. Okay, I like it, buddy. Yep. Cool. Here you go. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Take Antonio is not gonna be happy <laughs> with that. No, uh, I guess uh, spend some time cleaning it out. Yeah. I've got some uh, armor all spray and stuff at the house. Ideally, and I think I, I got a little battery powered Dewalt um, vacuum cleaner. Yeah, if I keep it down all week, if it runs into the weekend, I, I got a guy that loves to work on Saturdays and he enjoys doing this kind of work. So. Is his name Brandon Floyd? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I knew it, I knew it wasn't. I just wanted to make that joke. It's uh, land, landfill Jesus. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Jesus. All right. Yeah, well, Jesus will get this yeah, thing. Spit shine, it. boy. He does like to do it. <laughs> All right. Let's, Let's jump down and go look in the back door. Okay. Oh, and then try to hit your elbow on no, that right there. I'm it feels out. it feels fantastic. So, yeah, I looked at this briefly when we first got her in. Okay. Saw the fire putter. Dual out. dual putter outers. Yeah. How often you got to change them things, I wonder. I'm sure Cat will tell us. And it probably it probably is not cheap. I think just when you use them. Oh. I okay. hope. I hope so too. Yeah. I bet you they do have a time on them though. Probably maybe 10 to 10,000 so, hours or something. Yeah, so the, the monitor in there has a timer on it and yeah. it'll ding and say service required every so often. Okay. And then Caterpillar sends out the fire extinguisher specialty company and they come out and inspect us and reset the light. So hopefully it's one of the same, they just keep resetting. Yeah, hopefully uh, so. Until one day we get to use it. Yeah, I hope we don't have to use it. And We've set everything else on fire. Uh, don't even talk. Don't even talk like that, dude. <laughs> don't even talk like that. It's just a fact. <laughs> That's a badass dozer, though, man. Oh, yeah. This thing's really been a game changer up there in the landfill. So I hate that she's down. How many? It ain't got many hours on it. No, I think we're right at about 1,700. 1,700? Roughly. That sure is early to be having any type of mm. torque converter issues. We'll I have to come up here Thursday and. Get with the tech and see what yeah, see what he says. Hopefully he comes out and uh, we can make it get hot and yeah. come to a conclusion on it. All right, good deal, buddy. Love your oil changing rack. So before we go over and check out Brandon or whoever's on the uh, log screw over there, for you guys that were asking for an up close uh, view of the rotor inside of one of the roto choppers, this came out of the MC. 266, and I was just talking to Aaron, and unfortunately, this is now one very expensive piece of scrap metal so this is an older rotor that uh aaron was explaining to me and he's fixed them in the past but we just can't fix this one um they've got internal balancing weights is that would that be a good way to describe it that's how i understood it yeah so when they build the drum before they weld the ends on it they'll balance it and they put weights on the inside right and when you spin this thing around in the, in the machine you could hear it tinging around and we told Roto Chopper about this, and they just said, "Count your losses; you'll never balance it." Right. You know, so unfortunate. Yeah. And there's your there's your big bearing. Those are high dollar too. Yeah, I'm sure. Every anything to do with these <laughs> damn grinders are are high dollar, but there's no no repair in this one, so we just can't no. bear the thought of selling it for no. seventy three dollars or whatever it's gonna bring. It's pretty uh, heavy. It's pretty heavy, but still. Yeah. Hey, maybe we'll make a water fountain out of it or something. We'll, we need to do something with it. I just can't uh, throw it in the scrap metal box. <laughs> that hurts too much. Cut the end out, put it down there next to the road, and make it a mailbox. <laughs> hey, that'd be a good one for somebody to hit with a baseball bat. That'll teach them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's walk around here and check out the log screw. I'll go ahead and talk now because it's going to be loud when I get around this corner with the grinder running. But we had to rent this case uh, excavator just because they're so wide open right now it being spring and it's a beautiful day today like 73 degrees and uh, as i've said in previous videos mulch is pumping out right now so um i had to rent this extra case to come in just to kind of help out so that will afford us to take our cabelco put the big log screw on it which you'll see in just a second bust up some of this big material and then the case we can use it to feed the big b66 grinder which is rolling right now here and just give this case a try so as you can see there this is a cx 210d we've got a lot of fern 
he's in it today running it and so i guess brandon's on the cabelco right around the corner with the log screw so we'll walk around there and check it out that log screw is pretty neat i think y'all like to see it Okay, hopefully y'all can hear me now. We had to come around the corner from the big thousand horsepower roto chopper. But no matter how many horsepower you've got, unless you've got just a massive tub grinder, those horizontal high speed grinders can't handle some of this stuff right here. I mean, that one pine tree up yonder is ginormous. And look at some of these big old stumps in here. This is, that's just massive. So no horizontal grinder is going to eat some of this stuff so that's why brandon's around here with this uh log splitting screw i love this little tool around here man it's just so cool it's so satisfactory watching the screw go through the wood bust it open so i'll try to get you guys some asmr footage over here but this thing is really neat i want to get around here and make sure brandon sees me before we go walking up on him. Isn't this cool, guys? This is one of the coolest pieces of equipment that we've bought over the years. So this is a US Pride product, HF800 log screw. And man, look what it can do to these big old giant logs. Isn't that just cool? That is impressive, man. So that thing's obviously just spinning. Brandon's putting you know gentle pressure down on it and it'll just bust through these big old huge logs. Then he'll just take that screw and use it like a wedge to go down through and knock over or knock out any of the fibrous material that's kind of holding it together. I'm gonna try not to get too, too close to this thing, but check that out. Golly, the power in that thing is unreal. So cool. just put that screw head down in there bring it over here got him a little work platform but that is a monster pine log right there and it just goes right through it like nobody's business because that is a lot of pressure you see how all those uh, tree fibers have woven themselves together obviously from many 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 years of growth and you hear that thing just kind of popping loose it gets a little sketchy being kind of this close to it but the whole idea behind this is just to reduce the size of these logs obviously so that they'll uh, go through the grinder or be able to fit through the grinder in the first place but then the grinder is just is a lot easier to work um, on that on that rotor Oh, this is a cool one. Oh 
man, he's gonna pick that whole thing up. That's a lot of weight right there. And in the past, before we had this log splitter, all this stuff would just be wasted. We would just uh, either take it to the landfill or we would burn it. But now, thanks to having this thing, we can bust this material up and it helps feed the mulch business. Look at that, right down the middle. That is freaking impressive. Some of y'all have commented already, Brandon's a really good um, excavator operator. So that, it takes some finesse to get this stuff in the right angle to be able to apply the pressure to it, then just take the tip of that thing and knock it loose. So important to have a good operator all around the whole business site, but especially in this application right here, because you gotta have that little that point on that screw just right, or you'll be flipping logs, and you could break the head off of that screw too. Almost had it, Brandon. You gotta get that screw head buried in there enough to be able to support the weight and bring it over here to his little workstation. this oak and even the pine too those fibers are really interwoven and don't want to let go but he'll get them it's just like that right there
I had to walk and go get my phone, but uh, Brandon said this one's been giving him hell. Look how just all gnarled up. All these wood fibers. It's pretty wood. It's maybe some sweet gum or something, but man, those fibers are just all kind of gnarled up in there, making it a little bit more difficult for him. But that right there will go through the grinder, so he'll just go through this whole. It, it'll take some time, but he'll go through this whole pile and just split them up and stack them over here then we'll bring the grinder around here or either we'll put the big forks on the hyundai loader come around here and grab it take it around to the grinder but, oh man look at all the juice coming out of that this one's wet smoke coming off of that screw you can imagine that's a lot of friction as that thing is pushing its way down through these logs and we do have to uh, periodically send this screw back to us pride and they'll resurface it and um re what would be the word refinish the <laughs> i can't think of the word put new screws on it that's what i'm trying to say i'm struggling today you guys i ain't had my red bull This looks like some older pine right here. This should pop right open. You can, whenever it's been sitting for a little while and kind of dried out, it usually will bust open. But if it's fresh and still green, oh yeah. pretty some of this wood all those different colors even though this is just regular old pine you see that really bright yellow i kind of like just to come inspect and you know this was <laughs> this piece right here i can see in daylight and uh i'm not counting the rings but a long long time pretty interesting just to see what's on the inside of some of these logs like look at this one here look how yellow this wood is right here almost almost lime green color pretty cool all right i better get out of the way i'm up here looking at the colors in the wood getting all up in brandon's way
is so cool guys i could stay up here and watch that all day long and just love the noise that it makes when it's ripping through those logs but i gotta go ride around with aa ron right now we gotta go look at some future projects make us a uh, priority list we got lots and lots of stuff coming up that i want to share with you guys but appreciate you watching as always drop me a comment down below let me know where you're from what you want to see and i'll do my best hope you guys have a great day we'll see you on the next video